Today, I'm going to show you this mashup I just finished making. I took a t-shirt that I really liked the design on, but t-shirts generally aren't very flattering to me, at least the particular sleeves, and they were, tend to be way too long. Uh, and I mashed it up with this, I don't know if it was a tunic or a, you know, um, just a sort of a mini dress. It's, it's a bit longer than the shirt was even. Um, but again, it was something I really loved the color and the sleeves on, but I just never wore it. Well, now that I've mashed them together, I will definitely wear this. Normally what I might do is find some bell sleeves that I like on another item or make my own uh, that go well with the colors. And I think these look really nice. So I could just take those sleeves off, attach them to that and be done with it. Maybe shorten the shirt. Um, but I had another idea today. Because I thought these colors went together so well, what if I just find a way to merge these garments completely? Kind of like how I do my ponchos, but just merging these, this shirt and this t-shirt together so that I'll have the sides from this and the awesome sleeves with the center of the t-shirt. Let's see how it turns out. Normally when I cut t-shirts, I'll start about an inch away from the neckline, but this graphic comes out quite a bit. I really don't want to lose any of it. So it's looking more like that's two, I might go about three inches and that should bring me just a good inch outside of the edge of the graphic. So I've got enough there for seam allowance without losing the graphic or at least much of it if I do. <laughs> I think I'm going to give myself just an extra half inch just to be safe. So I've moved it. I'm at about one, two, about three and a half inches away from the edge of the collar here, or neckline. And you could use a pen to make this mark um, because you're gonna, that's gonna be in the seam allowance anyway, you'll never see it. But I couldn't get it to show up on mine, so I'm gonna use this chalk pen. That's really good, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So coming out again, one, two, three, and a half. Put it right there. There, that's pretty visible. So now I'm just going to line my little acrylic ruler up with that line. Cut this side off. That's one side. I'll just repeat that on the other side. Okay, so that's the t-shirt. We'll set that aside for a moment. So here's my donor dress. Um, you can see it's it's got some unusual tie, double set of ties in the middle and things that I didn't like, but I really liked the colors and I really liked these sleeves. It's a bit older and it's a bit misshapen as fast fashion things often are in that your seams don't necessarily lie flat and straight anymore. Sometimes they tend to twist around, but I want it to be as straight as possible on the final garment when I cut. So I'm going to just make sure these seams are nice and flat and I'm putting a couple clips in here just to sort of hold it that way. I'll do the same at the top in a moment. See now this side's twisted around a bit so I'm just going to try and pull that seam around. There it is. So it's straight with the underarm. And same thing, I'm just gonna put a clip there to try and keep it there. And a little bit further down as well. Now there are some pleats, just a few pleats in the front here that are gonna make it hard to make sure this is perfectly smooth, but I'm just gonna kind of do the same thing up here. Find the shoulder seam, front and back sides and just sort of put those together as well. It's not gonna be perfect and that's fine. I just wanna get it as much as possible so that it's sort of straight. So again, my neckline is right here, right about at the eight inch mark. So I'm just gonna set this on the seven inch mark just to go over one inch. And we'll just do another line. 
chalk's really hard to see on there, so I'm just making a couple of light pen marks. Again, those are gonna be in the seam allowance. You won't see them in the final product. That's a bit easier to see. So there's my the left side. So now I'll just pull that middle section away and bring back the t-shirt. So now we're gonna wanna pin these together and you're gonna wanna pin them right sides together. Find your shoulder seam up here and the shoulder seam here. And you're gonna wanna turn those so the right sides are together. Right there, and make sure those seams match up really well. And you can either pin it or use clips. From there, now you can turn it inside out and just continue pinning or clipping all the way down both sides. Don't stretch the t-shirt as you go because um, you don't want it to, you want it to line up nice and smooth. Continue down the other side. So there's one side pinned and ready to sew. Now if you want, you can pin the other side on right away. I find it easier to attach this side first and then come back and do that side. So I'm gonna try using my serger here, but you certainly can do this on a regular sewing machine and if so, you'd wanna make just a straight stitch about a quarter inch in and then zigzag your edges when you're done. Let's see how we go. Now I just went a little bit past the end of the shirt and then chained off because I'm going to end up shortening this anyway. So there's the first side on as you can see and I'm really happy with that. You can see the shoulder seams line up really nicely on those, which was what I was hoping for. You could probably have just sewn straight up one side and down the other, but I didn't want it to pull or stretch at all and pull that shoulder seam out of alignment. So that's why I went out each way separate, but you do it however you like. Uh, now I'm just going to pin on the other side. Again, right sides together and shoulder seams together. And same as before, just clip it or pin it all the way down each side. So the next step is just to try it on and figure out if you're happy with the lengths. Obviously my sides are a different length here, so I'm gonna have to cut it at some point, but I actually think the t-shirt's too long for me as well. So I've just kind of marked with a little pin here about how long I want it to end up when it's finished. So we'll just lay it flat and measure that across and cut it. I'm just sort of lining up the bottom edge of the t-shirt, front and back, uh, and those seams right there to make sure they kind of stay together bit windy out here. Let's hope that stays for me. If I get my underarm seams, so they're both at about 21 there. Just try to keep those from moving too much on me. <laughs> so there's my pin mark, but I want to leave just a little bit extra so I can hem it. So right about there. I'm just going to try to cut. It's not so, so good with a wooden ruler, unfortunately, but we're going to try it. See if I can just use this. There we go. So if I just take the shirt now by the two underarm spots and pull it like this and lay it down, you'll see that the front is just a tiny bit shorter than the back. I'm totally fine with that. Um, but that's just because I had lined it up by the bottom seams. And often the t-shirt's a little bit longer in the back. It still will be now, and that's fine. 
So all I'm gonna do now is take it inside and serge around the entire bottom edge and then just fold it under a little bit and run a straight stitch with my sewing machine just to hem it. So I'm just choosing to start not where one of the t-shirt seams joins the, the dress or shirt seam, um, but rather with the actual side seam of the garment, just because I feel it'll be the less noticeable there if you have any over sewing, because we're gonna go all the way around and come back there. search now around the edge. You could leave it if you don't mind that look, uh, but I think I'm just going to fold it up once and give it a straight stitch. So you could just fold it over and sort of guesstimate. Um, but my sister-in-law recently got me this handy dandy little tool that helps you tell if you're got the same hem going all the way around. So I'm just kind of going to fold these over a little bit and just clip it enough to try and stay consistent. Now I've done some testing and I don't think the stitch looks any different on the front side or the back side, so I think it's going to be easier for me to do it this way. So I'm sewing basically on the wrong side of it and that way I'll be able to try and keep a consistent distance hopefully as I go. So I'm just going to start at that same side seam that I started when I was doing the serging and I'm just using a straight stitch. I'm going to try to line up the inside of this left prong on my presser foot with this edge as I go to try and keep it about the same distance, but it doesn't have to be perfect. What do you think? I really like it. This is something I'll actually wear now. The two pieces separately, I definitely didn't wear. So I'm really happy with it. Um, I did just use a standard straight stitch, so there's not a ton of stretch, but it's a loose top around the bottom, so I'm not too worried about that. If yours is something that's a bit snugger than that and you're worried about it, you could certainly use a twin needle or a zigzag around that bottom stitch. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if so, give me a thumbs up. What do you think, River? <laughs>